Happy Solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. That's right. He's not just king of the world. He's not just like king of the earth. He's not just king of us. He is king of the universe. That's awesome. Quote of the day. There is no excellence without sacrifice. There is no excellence without sacrifice. If you desire to accomplish a little, then sacrifice a little. But if you desire to accomplish great things, you will sacrifice much. There is no excellence without sacrifice. I want you to think right now of people in your life that have somehow obtained excellence, in your opinion. They might be excellent at playing the piano. They might be excellent at singing. They might be excellent in reading. They may be excellent at their job. Maybe they're like the essential Trojans and they're excellent at football. And let's actually talk about this for a moment. There are many Trojans that are here today. On Friday night, for those of you who were there, we saw excellence on the football field. Why did that happen? Because of sacrifice. Those young men who competed excellently on Friday night, it wasn't a one-time deal. It began in third grade, and fourth grade, and fifth grade, and sixth grade, and seventh grade. It was every single summer waking up for practice at 5.30 and 6.30. It was weights, it was hard work. There is no excellence without sacrifice. But it wasn't actually the boys on the team because those boys could have never gotten to a practice in third grade without their parents who drove them, who bought them gear, who made them food, who sat in freezing cold weather and cheered them on when they sat the bench. There is no excellence without sacrifice. It's true in your relationships. For those of you who look at your grandparents as being people of excellence, why were your grandparents people of excellence? Because of what? Because they sacrificed. Why do we often look at as police officers and firefighters and militaries being people of excellence? What are they willing to do? They're willing to sacrifice. Today, I can boldly stand before you and tell you that there is no excellence without sacrifice. And I can say this with absolute certitude because it's actually true about our God. Why can I also say to you today that we have the most excellent of all gods? Because our God is a God of sacrifice. Because our God was willing to sacrifice everything for you and for me. And what is the most excellent form of worship then? It is sacrifice. And what are you at right now? You are at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which is the most excellent form of worship, because there is no excellence without sacrifice. Christ himself is the most excellent of all gods because he offered everything for you and for me. So what happens then when you live in a world where we are repulsed by every form of suffering and sacrifice? What happens when we live in a world which has rejected the cross in its totality? What happens when we have now raised more than one generation which doesn't value sacrifice but looks for every possibility to live a life of comfort, not a life of excellence? 
This morning I woke up, went to the 7.30 Mass, and as I'm driving in my car, what am I obsessed with? Dialing the heat to the exact degree that I want it to be. Why? Because I don't like sacrifice. I've been trained to despise sacrifice. We live in a world that says that if it's difficult for you at the end of your life, well, you can just kill yourself. And if you conceive a child and that's difficult for you, you can just kill the child. We live in a world that has said comfort reigns, mediocrity reigns, minimalism reigns, not sacrifice. I'm very blessed in my eight years of living here in Dearborn County of getting to know a lot of you who own your own business. Plumbers, electricians, restaurant owners. What is the number one complaint of anyone who owns or runs a business? It's not inflation. It's the fact that they can't find a young person who's willing to actually work. because work entails sacrifice. There is no excellence in life without sacrifice. If you want to be an excellent mom or a dad, what do you actually need to embrace? If you want to be excellent at your job, what do you need to embrace? If you want to be excellent in sport, what do you need to embrace? And it's hard. It's very, very hard. This past Friday, as I was in the confessional at St. Mary's in Aurora, it dawned on me that in my 19 years of priesthood, I am hearing more confessions now as a priest than I ever have in my entire priesthood. A half hour before every daily Mass, 12 hours on First Friday here at All Saints, and 12 hours on Third Friday at St. Mary's in Aurora. I mention this because when you come to confession, you reveal to me the fact that you're suffering. That life is really hard. Whether it be in your marriage, whether it be with your children, whether it be with your addictions, or your children's addictions, your children's lack of faith, your own sickness, your own cancer, your own suffering, your own depression, your own anxiety. The reality is, is that every single one of us lives with the cross, and we live with sacrifice, but we live in a world which rejects all of it. I can't tell you the amount of times that people come up to me and they say, Father, I don't understand. I'm a Christian. Father, I don't understand why any of this is happening. I thought that God loved us. And with as much compassion as I possibly can, the only response is, have you seen a crucifix recently? Have we forgotten what Christ himself did? Have we forgotten this right here? And then nowhere in the Bible, nowhere does it say that there will be no suffering. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that if you follow me, all suffering will go away. And in fact, the opposite is often the case. But it is his sacrifice, it is his suffering that gives meaning and purpose to our suffering. For those of you who know the movie, The Song of Bernadette, it tells the story of Our Lady of Lourdes. We have three shrines of Our Lady of Lourdes at All Saints Parish. And in that movie, the Blessed Virgin Mary looks at Bernadette and says, I cannot promise you happiness in this life, but only in the life to come. Mary would never say anything against her son. The reality is, is that you and I suffer, and there is sacrifices in our life, but that sacrifice and that suffering will propel us to excellence if we're willing to embrace it. But so many of us have been trained in a world where there is no cross to run from it, to flee from it, and to fear it. And yet our gospel passage today where the church says, look at your king, 
is not him on a lofty throne. It's him on the altar of the cross. Why? Because he is our king. And he is a king that gives purpose and meaning to our life. And he is a king who reminds us that there is no excellence without sacrifice. And our excellent God gives us the most perfect sacrifice on the cross. And we, my brothers and sisters, have the opportunity at this Mass and at every single Mass to enter into that one perfect, excellent sacrifice. Many of you heard several months ago, I have a homily, and I talked about the fact that every Mass is a representation of Calvary, which is what we believed for 2,000 years. And I realize that for the last 60 years, we put a huge emphasis on the fact that it's a meal and a gathering, and have negated the fact that the Mass is the representation of Calvary. The Mass is how we enter into the most excellent sacrifice of Christ. In the book of Hebrews, we clearly hear in chapter 9, verse 22, that there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. There is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And Jesus shed his blood for us on the cross, replacing the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. But he also gave us a way to enter into that one sacrifice. And that is why at the Last Supper, Jesus doesn't take a loaf of bread and a cup of wine at the same time say, this is my body and blood given up for you, and here's my presence, come and adore me. That's not what he does. Jesus intentionally says, this is my body given up for you, and then separately he says, and this is the cup of my blood which will be shed for you. The two separate consecrations, which is what we have at Mass, which is why the bells are rung at two separate times, is because when you separate blood from body, you have death. And there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood, the separation of blood from body. And Christ gave us at the Last Supper these two consecrations so that we could enter into that one perfect sacrifice. Why? For two reasons. So that you can unite your sacrifice and your suffering to his and so that we can bring others to Calvary. One thing every single one of you knows is that suffering on your own is really, really hard. These men, these young men, who are going to state on Friday, are going to state as a team. And the reality is, if their coach emailed them out workouts every day and said, just do these workouts by yourself, on your own, and then show up for a game on Friday night, the reality is, is that none of them would do the workouts. Except for a very small few. Because no one likes to suffer alone. And yet when people come together, they're willing to do aerobics. They're willing to work out in the gym. They're willing to do burpees. They're willing to stand in 90 degree weather with a helmet and full pads on. They're willing to lift weights. They're willing to do anything if you're together with other people. Why do we come to Mass? We come to Mass to bring our sufferings to Jesus and to unite our sufferings to his cross. Because suffering alone is hard. And every single one of you that carries your own cross needs to know right now that you're not alone in your suffering because he is with you. And that's why you come to Mass, is to know that you're not alone in your suffering. And we also come to Mass to bring our prayers and our petitions that we have for other people, to bring them to Calvary itself. I want you to listen to the prayers of the Mass. In just a few moments, I'm going to say, pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Notice, listen to, again, what do I say? Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours. So the question is, what sacrifice are you bringing? At that moment, that's when your heart is supposed to overflow with, here are my sufferings, here are my crosses, and Lord, I want to unite them to your one sacrifice. And also, it is at that point where you say, Lord, 
here are the people that I bring with you, my children, my grandchildren, my godchildren, my heart. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And then what do you all respond, actually? May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. What is that sacrifice? It is the one sacrifice of Christ united to yours. Now one sacrifice. You don't say, may the Lord accept the sacrifices at your hand. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand. The sacrifice that I have brought as an individual that I have now united to the one sacrifice of Christ, which will now be re represented on the altar. We are unbelievably blessed because we have the most excellent of all gods. Because our God is not afraid of the cross, and in fact, he embraces the cross, and he carries the cross, and he dies on the cross to teach us to unite our sacrifices and our sufferings to his. There is no excellence without sacrifice. And as we come to this Mass, we know that we are at the place where Christ desires us to unite our hearts to his. I want you to just dream, just imagine just for a moment. Father Mann and I are chatting about this. This might be a foreshadowing. But I want you to imagine coming to Mass here at All Saints Parish. And you hear this. Welcome to All Saints Parish. Today is the Solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Before we begin today's Mass, please take a moment and call to mind your own sacrifices and sufferings. So you may more worthily unite them to the sacrifice of Christ. And please take a moment to unite your prayers and your intentions and to place before the Lord those who you would like to enter into this sacrifice, the one sacrifice of Calvary. Our priest today will be offering his mass intention for Betty Sue. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, Crown with Many Crowns. Do we understand where we are at? Do we understand what is happening? Do we understand the one sacrifice that Christ gave for us, the most excellent form of worship, and that we have the ability to enter into it in freedom and intentionality. Let's pray for that grace to have our eyes opened all the more to what is taking place as we enter into the sacrifice that Christ gave for us once on the cross and that he allows us to re-enter into again and again with hope, with trust, and God willing, with joy.